morning all all right so we only have three games tonight in the national hockey league so the preview and the news video go together once again uh two games starting at 7 eastern one starting at 7 30 eastern and that's it so nice early night uh tomorrow's gonna be kind of an early night too anyways uh seven eastern four pacific start between the detroit red wings and the florida panthers uh these teams met november the second florida won that matchup two nothing these teams will meet again on march the second as well as march the 30th the Detroit Red Wings, 22-16-5 overall. They're 6-3-1 in their last 10. Uh, Sprong has had a really good under-the-radar season so far. 11 goals, 17 assists, 28 points. On the Florida side, they're 27-13-3. They're 8-1-1 in their last 10. They'll be without Sasha Barkov tonight. He's out with a lower body injury. Sounds like it's day-to-day, -day, nothing major, but he won't be in the lineup. Uh, Ekman Larson has had a remarkable run considering the buyout from the Canucks. 8 goals, 14 assists, 22 points. So, nice bounce back season for Ekman Larson. Good on him. 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific start between the Montreal Canadiens and the New Jersey Devils. This is the second of three meetings on October 24th. New Jersey won 5-2. The third and final meeting will be on February the 24th. Montreal's 18-18-7. They're 3-5-2 in their last 10 games. And Slavkovsky's been good. He's been getting, you know, top minutes. He's been playing well. The five goals and 11 assists don't really tell the full story. It really feels like with Slavkovsky, I'm talking about Byfield from last year, where Byfield was getting ice time and playing well. The numbers didn't necessarily show it. Uh, on the New Jersey side, 22-16-3 is their record, and they will be getting Timo Meyer back. Uh, they are 6-3-1 and one in their last 10 games. Dawson Mercer, after a slow start, has turned it around. He has 13 goals, 8 assists for 21 points. And then at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, Buffalo and Chicago finish off their season series. Yep. If you watched the Hawks against the Sharks last night, and you're like, how could it get more exciting? Now you got the Hawks and the Sabres. 3-2 uh, to two win for Buffalo on November the 19th. Chicago, 13-29-2. Uh, they're 2-7-1 and one in their last 10, including that shootout victory last night over San Jose. Kershev had a really good game last night. I did watch that game too. Uh, eight goals, 15 assists, 23 points for Kershev. He didn't get on the score sheet last night, but with the amount of shots he had and good chances he had, he's due. Buffalo, 19, 21, and four. They're five, four, and one in their last 10. And one thing that slides under the radar is definitely the play of UPL or Uko Pekalukkanen. Uh, 10, nine, and two record, 906 save percentage. Honestly, Lukanen, if, if you want to have hope in your Sabres fan, Look at UPL's numbers. Uh, he has positives across the board. We'll see whether or not Buffalo can turn it around. Which, speaking of Sabres, a former Buffalo Sabre, Tyler Ennis announced his retirement. He ended up with 700 games in the National Hockey League, 144 goals, 202 assists, 346 points. Hasn't been in the NHL the last couple seasons. He's been playing overseas. In the NHL, he's played for Buffalo, Minnesota, Toronto, Ottawa, and Edmonton. And he played for Ottawa twice. So... Ennis, useful depth player, uh, had some good years there. Uh, will there be a career video? There could be at some point. Absolutely, yes. Uh, in returning from retirement news, Cody Hodgson, who announced he would be trying to come back, or at least it was announced he was trying to come back, he has signed a professional tryout with the Milwaukee Admirals, which makes sense. When he retired, he was Nashville Predator, and Milwaukee, of course, the AHL affiliate for the Nashville team. So all the best to Hodgson on his attempt to come back. Um, I know towards the end of his career there before now, uh, you know, his speed was an issue, but now we know why and all that. So yeah, all the best to him. He is 34 though, so temper expectations. I don't know that Hodgson plays another game in the NHL. I'm just glad to see him coming back and playing professional hockey. So I wanted to talk about this today because everywhere I look, while I'm compiling these, the, the, these boards, uh, it's all about Toronto. It's all about Toronto and the blown leads. And they're not scoring enough. And there, there's definitely a video to be done on that. But I, I, I would feel like I'm kind of piling on a little bit. And yet there is a video to be done on the Toronto Maple Leafs and on the fact that they're just not scoring enough goals. Now, the, the funny thing is, you've got the blown leads Toronto has been producing recently. And the comebacks that the Edmonton Oilers have been capable of. And, and what I think this shows, and people talk a lot about all the analytics, yada, 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 and all that. And that's fine. I've talked about the analytics myself. But the difference, I think a lot of it is mental. A big part of the difference between the teams that are blowing the leads and the teams with the comebacks, it's mental. You can tell that the body language shows when you are a team that's struggling with your confidence. As soon as that first puck goes in your net, the body language changes. 
and you might be playing a little bit scared. And and I think that that's where it gets tough to fix this. I don't know that a trade fixes it, and it's something I've talked about with Toronto for years. The Leafs, it's just it, it's not been a matter of you know do they have enough talent? Yes. Are they are they good enough? I think yes. But a lot of it is between the years, and I I don't know how you fix that. And this is where, if you want to make the argument against keeping the core four together and trying the same thing over and over again, this is this is actually something that kind of agrees with that sentiment that keeping everything together doesn't make a lot of sense because this team together, as it's constituted, it's not going to work. Um, at least it doesn't look like it's going to because right now they're, what, third in the division, but with the way Detroit's been playing, is Toronto that far ahead of Detroit? Not anymore. So the Oilers have had their 11-game winning streak. A lot of their wins have been via comebacks because it never feels like Edmonton's out of a game. And with Toronto, they can have a 2-0 lead, but it always feels like the next goal's the big one. Can they get that next goal to make it a three-goal lead? Because if it becomes a one-goal lead, uh uh-oh. So it's a big difference in how we view it too as fans and yeah it can be tough to watch as a fan to have to know that any lead is not necessarily safe again i went through that last year with vancouver where no matter what lead they had it was like "Eh, we'll see we'll see if they bring this one home or not uh but that's that's where the mental side of it takes over and I, i i there isn't i don't think there's a trade that can fix it i don't think there's necessarily like i keep seeing well they need Corey perry i don't know the putting Corey perry in that locker room right now necessarily fixes what ails the Toronto Maple Leafs because I think what would fix it is just it, it's I, I don't know if attitude is the right word I, I don't know if it's that whole place full 60 minutes but something's just not right in Toronto and it's caused them to lose four in a row and whereas if it was a four game losing streak for Florida or New Jersey or, or Chicago and you wouldn't pay a lot of attention when it's Toronto it's the center of the universe it's called that for a reason uh, part of it's just a joke, but part of it really is this idea that everything rolls around the Leafs. And so it it really magnifies that four-game losing streak. Which brings us to Ottawa. So nice segue, and it's the second nice segue of the video. I didn't even set the board up that way, so it's just it's a happy accident. Uh, Coach Jacques Martin it has called out his team, and he says part of their problem is mental as well. So he points out they had the 4-2 to lead. He wasn't happy with the 4-4 goal. People reading between the lines uh, think he's calling out Tarasenko on that one. Um, Tarasenko's never been known for being a defensive stalwart, so, you know, that's that's kind of been part and parcel. But that's where Tarasenko no longer being a 40-goal scorer comes in because when he's a 40-goal scorer and the defense is maybe a little iffy, you think, well, you can, you can put up with the iffy defense because look what he's able to do with the goal scoring, and now you don't have that with him. But, yeah, uh, Martin not happy with the results. And it will be very interesting to see what the Ottawa Senators do at the trade deadline, which is less than two months away. We are not that far from the trade deadline, and it definitely feels like trade talks are picking up, which segues into the next, uh, which is Pierre Lebrun saying that the Merzlikens trade market is, is very soft. There are no teams that right now are interested in Elvis. And... You know, while that may sound far-fetched because of how often players change hands and contracts change hands, Elvis, before this season, had back-to-back rough seasons statistically. And this year's stats aren't a lot better. They're, They're better, but they're not a lot better. And then you've got the cap hit he has, plus the fact the contract goes till 2027. Yeah, so basically what Pierre Lebrun thinks is it may have to wait until the offseason. So this awkwardness in Columbus of the three goaltenders and Elvis not being happy may run till the end of the season. Here's to hoping that it doesn't. It's kind of been a nightmare season for Columbus that started with training camp, hasn't it? Or started during the summer, really, uh, before training camp even started. So uh, the good news for Columbus fans, Boone Jenner is set to return to the lineup on Friday. It looks like he's going to be centering the top line and uh, all the best to Boone Jenner on his return once that takes place. Uh, Kasperi Kapanen, the St. Louis Blues, have placed him on injured reserve, and they've recalled Adam Gaudet. So Adam Gaudet will come up, uh, which will lead people to say, oh, Adam Gaudet's a blue, I'd forgotten. Um, Gaudet, of course, a player who looked like he was going to be a very good third-line center in the NHL. It just really hasn't worked out that way. We'll see if he can get into some games for St. Louis here and maybe drum up some interest around the NHL. There's definitely teams that could use a third or fourth line center right now, uh, or just, you know, a 13th forward, and and maybe Gaudet would be an upgrade on the 13th forward from what another team has. We'll see. 
Uh, but at the, at the very least, capping it on IR, he'll be reevaluated. I think it said in four weeks. So Gaudet could get an extended run here with St. Louis. We shall see. Uh, good news for Caps fans. Alex Ovechkin is a full participant in practice today. He's missed the last three games. The good news is the Caps have won two of those three games without him. Uh, that's where the Capitals change in their style of play. So it's no longer reliant on getting a bunch of goals from Ovechkin. It, it kind of works out so that if Ovi's not in the lineup, you're all right. The one thing to keep in mind with Ovechkin and this whole chase of Gretzky and everything is that, you know, with Ovi being in his late 30s, getting close to 40, the injuries can take longer to recover from and it they can become more frequent as well. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. But let me know your thoughts regarding any of these items on the board. Don't forget to tell me who you think is going to win these games tonight. And hey, thank you guys so much for all your support. If you haven't already hit like and subscribe, it's greatly appreciated. Either way, I shall talk to you again soon.